up on today's show, polishing canopies. We're gonna have a quick look at how we polish the seam line out of the uh, Hein 24 build. Quite a nasty thing in there. Very, very simple, uh, just using polishers. Revel 148 Tornado update. This is the new tool one we've been working on. We've had a little bit of a gap, but we've carried on with that one. The Trumpeter 135th scale Hind. Big update on that one this week. Uh, we're talking about that one in depth. Charity auction news, yes, the Snap Charity is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, some fantastic uh, donations being been uh, put through this week, so we'll be going through those. Kit reviews, we've got the ICM, uh, this is the DO215B4 kit, the reconnaissance one from ICM. Also we've got the Tacom Leopard, this is the two-in-one kit, so you actually get the 1A5 and C2 versions in the same box, so we'll be reviewing those. Plus all the news from the forum with the SIGs and the group builds. Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. A um, bit of problems on the site this week. You may have noticed it was running very, very slow on Tuesday and Wednesday and up to about midday on a Thursday. It was extremely slow, very annoying because you clicked on anything and it used to hang for ages and then bits of it would load through and everything else. Anyway, the, um, obviously spoke to the host. The host have fixed it all and in fact, it's now running even faster because it's on its own dedicated server now uh, and everything else. So if you did have problems, especially subscribing, because I know what's happening, eventually it would load through. You click subscribe, go off and do your subscription for bits. When you come back to fill in your bits and pieces on the registration, it was taking forever to load through. And if you were like me and impatient and clicking refresh and everything, you might have lost it. So uh, I know a lot of you did, but I managed to get hold of you direct or you got hold of me through the contact me page. And then obviously I managed to sort you out and get you back onto the site and everything else like that. But if you did have troubles, please shoot me an email and I can sort you out. Um, same goes with ordering as well. I know that the actual, the store page as well took forever to load as well. Um, and obviously because it's integrated in with uh, the actual shopping cart system, it's very, very slow. Anyway, it's all completely fixed now. So if you had any problems ordering or anything else like that, pop back and you can do it all there. No problem at all. Busy week. Um, I really threw myself into the hind because I wanted to get the hind into the paint bay uh, as of next week. Um, so if you were looking on my personal Facebook, the Phil Flory one, you would have seen I put up photos all week about the build. Um, and then obviously I put a couple up onto the actual uh, Flory Models Facebook page as well to keep you up to date with how it was going because the site was so slow. Um, needless to say, really coming together now. The rotor head is a loose fit. I've still got to do some things with the rotor head. As you can see here, it's all here. This is the kit part. I'm going to wire it up yet. So it's going to have all the hydraulic lines and everything running into this one and the electric cables going through it all. So I'm going to do all of those in um, some plumbing, some wire, various things in there to really bring that to life. But the actual unit itself as you can probably see here, really coming to life. Photo etch absolutely everywhere, and there is a mountain of it. As you can see, it is literally all over this. Some quite technical areas to get it in because you have to sort of curve it round. We cover it quite in depth um, when I'm talking you through it about how we get all that one on. Canopy going on, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on in the show, but obviously there's a nasty seam line in there, so we remove that. Uh, and generally just sm really sparking it up, making it look a little bit sort of better in there and everything else. Lots of wiring, details in the cockpit area just to bring it all to life and everything else. But now she is, apart from a little bit of work there, ready to go into the paint bay, which is great because what I'm gonna do next week is I'm gonna clear this entire bench off, turn it into my spray booth because the trouble is I've got a lovely spray booth behind me and everything else, but it's so tight I can't get the angles in. I can only get two cameras in there. Um, when we do it here, obviously I can get all four cameras working. So we won't have a problem with that. So I'm gonna try and sort of do this. So all spraying is together. So I can convert my bench into the spray bay uh, for the week and then go through it and do it all like that using the other spray booths. So part, what is that now? Part, whatever we're on now, five uh, is up on the site. Or is it six? Six now, aren't we? Part six is up on the site now. Obviously it's gonna cover the canopy, the canopy work you can see a little bit later on in the, in the video, but obviously the full version of it. All the detailing, obviously the photo etch, we talk about installing photo etch, uh, bending it and everything else like that and how to use ballpoint pen to give photo etch a little bit more of a sort of three dimensional. Because the trouble with photo etch is, it's lovely, don't get me wrong, but it's it's just flat by its nature. So by using a ballpoint pen, you can give it texture to sort of bring things out. So you can bring riveting in, you can do things with grills and vents and that to make them look a lot more sort of three dimensional. 
I promised I would have an update on for the tornado, but I have failed, quite frankly. Now, there is reason for this. Obviously, I pushed on massively all week with the hind to get us into a position where we're ready for paint. So what we've actually done there, we've glued in and we've taken care of a few little details around the cockpit area. So now this little guy here is ready for paint. So obviously next week, uh, even this afternoon, I might start with the paintwork get the primers down, everything else like that onto both of them uh, and working through the paint. So part one, what are we now, cool, I've got to remember now, it's been a while now, what are we, part four um, for the actual tornado build will be up early part of next week. And so I'm gonna split them into two so you've got something. So I'm thinking maybe Tuesday we'll have the next part of the tornado up and then obviously on the Friday we'll have behind. So you've got something to watch during the week and everything else like that. But keep an eye obviously on the site, uh, the Facebook pages and things like that and I'll keep you updated as those are actually going through. But as I say, the paint and everything's arrived for this so I've been waiting for the paint, but now I'm going to do the spray booth just so I can get all the cameras in a lot closer and you can see exactly what I'm doing. But again, it's still a fantastic kit. Absolutely loving building both of those. They really are doing exceptionally well. So anyway, talking of behind, as I said, it's got a center seam in it um, and it's center seams in canopies and when you're manufacturing them, you know, obviously usually they come from the side and in. It's not like a vac form or plunging where, you know, obviously it's going down. So you always end up with a center seam and I know there's lots of people on there who I think overcomplicate getting rid of seam lines because they use different compounds and polishing and dipping and everything else like that. So I'm going to show you my way, which is literally just a case of going through a couple of sanders uh, and a buffer and job done. So anyway, here's a look at taking the center seam out behind. First thing you notice though, is one is mine has a very small crack. I don't know if you can see it on the front. These sprue marks were already removed and I assume where it was snipped off the sprue, there's a tiniest little crack. Luckily for me, it is microscopic and it looks like a scuff rather than a crack. The only thing you will notice, or hopefully you can see, down here we've got this guy. And this is our good old friend, a molding seam, uh, and we don't want it in here. So I do a quick run through of this one because somebody asked the other day about it. First of all, what I do is protect your clear part. So from my point of view, what we do, we get a good lump of putty or white tack or blue tack or whatever you want to use. Okay, and we're just going to shove some of this in. Now warm it up before you put it in there. Okay, so just roll it between your hands, get it all nice and supple, soft and everything else like that. Because the thing is, if you're going to come in and chuck it in, you know, when it's hard and too hard, you're gonna crack it trying to push it all in. But when it's warmed up, it's very pliable, it's very soft and it's malleable. And that's the main thing, you can actually get it in there. I recommend doing this to all canopies. And I know I'm my worst critic because I don't do it myself sometimes, but you should do because this will stop any cracking. So all you do is come along, don't ram it in, just lightly give it a nudge. And it doesn't have to be pushed right the way up all in there. All it's gonna do is help stop it from pushing down too hard and cracking and everything else like that. And this has probably saved my bacon on more times than I'd like to remember, but don't push it in too hard because you're gonna crack it. Just literally put it in. Now this line, hopefully you can see running down in here, you get in there catching it in the light, has got to go, okay? So there's a couple of ways of doing this. To start with, because it's a very heavy one, what we're going to do is we're just gonna scrape it off with a blade because it's on an edge, okay? And it's on an edge, obviously, for a reason. The nice thing about using a blade is we can get right up to our area where we've got this detail running around the back. Now, I know you can't see it perfectly well here, but I can see it here. So what you wanna do is take it all off until you can't see the seam anymore, okay? And it's quite a tricky shape on this one because it's not just flush. So we're doing this one and we're going right the way up. Okay, so I'm happy it's all gone, but as you probably notice now, it's got a big flat area in. Now what I'm gonna do, just to protect all the other areas, just gonna grab a little bit of tape. And I'm just gonna put it literally around the cockpit area here. Okay, just one little bit. Just like that, and we're gonna do the back. Now the idea of doing this is, is so we don't end up ruining anywhere else, okay? And what I'm gonna do for you guys, I'm gonna take a chance here, and I'm gonna take this dough out of the back just so you can see what's going on a little bit better. 
Okay, so if I just gently, again, when you're taking this out, do it very gently, very softly, don't rip it out, okay? But hopefully you can see there now, we've scraped that down and that center seam, I can't feel it anymore. This is where your sort of sanding sticks come in. So you wanna use old ones or very fine. Now this is our green range, which is our really fine, fine sander. Okay, and we're just gonna work the numbers, okay? So literally just coming in, making sure we get a nice cut in that edge. Okay, and we're just trying to go right over so we can't see it in there anymore. So you might be able to see we've got a small little clear part in the middle there. That's, oh, hopefully you can see it, I can see it. You see it down in there just glinting in the middle? That's still the center seam. So you wanna keep sanding until you've got nothing but a flat finish, okay? So that one goes in just like that and takes care of it and we've got it all off, okay? So we're all nicely looking very even right the way across. Then we're gonna grab some sponges. So we've just got a little skinny sponge here and what this is doing is taking out that original scratching. So you want it all to look the same as we go through. Now the reason for using a skinny is just so we can keep it localized and also we can see what we're doing because if we came along with a big sponge, we can't see exactly what's going on. With a skinny, I can see what's happening. I can look for it and you're looking to take out just the bigger scratches. You're not trying to polish it up at the moment. Okay, all right, and there we go. We've got it so it's quite a, a fuzzy area now. And now we're just gonna work our way through the different sponges. So for instance, we find a, a, a little bit of a cleaner one. We've got this one here, this is our black range, and this is a plastic, you know, basically sand up, but this is a polisher on this side, okay? So now what you can do is literally just come in. Hopefully what you're noticing is, it's not looking scratchy anymore, it's just looking fuzzy, okay? And that's what we're trying to achieve here. We're not trying to make it disappear at the moment. We're just literally trying to keep it all together. The other thing as well, as you might notice, I don't do this thing of like masking an area, okay? Because otherwise you're gonna have it quite a localized area. I want it to blend all in, okay? Now with these, you can use wet or dry. So I'm just gonna wet it. And we're just doing circular motions now. And we're just trying to get rid of all the scratches. We're not trying to do anything apart from remove the last lot of scratches in there, okay? So that one's in. Now if we wet our finger and rub it over there. Give it a rub, you can see. Hopefully you can see there's no mass scratches in there. It's just a bit fuzzy. Now this is where this guy comes in. Now this is a polisher. Now this a grit on this is horrendously high. I can't even remember it off the top of my head. And we've got the white side, which everybody says doesn't do anything. As you're about to see, it will, okay? So literally in with the polisher. So again, we're gonna wet it. And all we're gonna do is use this side wet to start with, then we're gonna use it dry. Now, as you can see, I'm doing sort of circular motions as we're sort of going in with this one. Now, I haven't used any polishing compounds or anything at the moment. We're gonna just let the polishers do the job. So you can see that's the this one on it. And each time we're going over it, as you might notice, we're getting rid of the scratches. And now we've got more of a sort of satin finish on here. We're looking a little bit shiny, but we're looking at the edges to make sure we've got no scratches. And we're looking in here to make sure we've got no scratches as well. Okay, now comes the clever bit. This is the miracle bit. This is the white, okay? So we're gonna use it dry. Okay, and I'm just gonna do a couple of passes. Okay, and stop. And as you can see, polished. Okay, that's just the middle. So if we just have this a run around. Now, as you say, I'm using it dry. There's no polishing compound in here at the moment. But obviously you can use polishing compound anytime if you like, but this is the one where people say, oh, it doesn't do anything. This is what this one's really designed to do. It's designed to buff, polish, and take out acrylic, okay? This is, its sole purpose in life is to polish, okay? And as you can see, we're not using anything on this. There's no materials, no compounds or tea cuts or polish or toothpaste and all those good things. And there we go, okay? And as I say, that's got rid of it all totally. Now we know it's not the clearest part in the world, but there we go, that is showing that. No center seam and no nothing on there. Now, because we're using the polisher, we're gonna take off these end bits here, because it's not gonna hurt anywhere. Okay, and then we're just gonna go over everything to take care. I'm gonna wet it just a little, all over, 
and we're listening for the squeak. Squeaks are good. Squeaks means it's absolutely like a mirror and it's all polished up. But this is the thing, you don't need all these fancy polishes and absolutely everything. You just need a little bit of time, okay? And you're just working your way through. Just do this edge. And the great thing about doing this is you don't need to dip it either. You could do the entire canopy and you don't dip it. Now the trouble with dipping is, is when you come along to mask it afterwards, you have all that problem of where it's been dipped. But there we go. There is our canopy now, without a single seam line or in it in there. So again, apologies, it's not a perfect canopy because we know it's quite old, but you can see we've got nothing in there at all. And to be honest, in here we've got residue left over from the, the actual uh, tank. But hopefully you can see, I'll put my finger in behind it, nothing at all, absolutely fine. Really straightforward, very, very easy, okay? Okay, and that's it, it's that simple. And that works with any type of canopy. Just remember, use tack, um, or like blue tack or white tack, something else like that, to pad out the inside of your canopy because, and I know through the forum as well, great experience, a lot of you do that thing of like buffing away at it and then you crack it. Just be careful when you're putting it in because as I said, I've known people who stuff this stuff in too hard and it cracks it as well, okay? But it just makes it a nice block solid. So when you're grabbing hold of it and you're buffing it and all the rest of it, you're not gonna put any stress onto the clear part because you don't want to crack them. Speaking of clear parts, because um, I've still got it here, the uh, canopies for the Typhoons, this is the Airfix, we've been speaking about it over the last few weeks. Um, to be honest, I think mine are the better ones and these are as good as gonna get. Obviously we saw the, the pictures of it last week. You can probably see this one we got down here. You know, the thing is, I think that's as good as you're gonna get. But the way I look at it, so I've had a lot of people and they say to me, oh, it's terrible and all the rest of it. Okay, yeah, it's not brilliant, but you know, it, it, it could be worse. You know, my point to it is, because the way I'm thinking is, use it, use your canopy, Get the replacement one that's slightly better, obviously, okay? Use it, and then when the aftermarket boys come along, and I can guarantee you somebody is going to do it, and if they don't, I will clout heads, okay? But I imagine by the time we get to Telford, somebody is gonna do a new vac form canopy for it. And let's face it, it's gonna be the easiest fix. Even the front one, do not put it down with a sealer glue. You know, use a PVA glue, put your canopy on as it is at the moment, and then when a new one comes out, it's a simple job, run a blade around it, lift it off, and put the new replacement one on, job done, okay? But I don't think, you know, it's it's all very well. I know I've had quite a few emails with people saying, it's terrible, how could Airfix, you know, let's face it, they're not the only company in the world who does this. You know, looking at my stash over there, I could list off a load of names of companies who've made real schoolboy errors and cock-ups, and then just literally turn the back and stick the fingers up to the model. It was like, tough, get on with it. You know, you're a modeler. At least they are trying to do something, and they are sending out replacement canopies. And I know a few of you have now had two, three, four, I know one person's even had five replacement canopy sent out to him you know and as he's saying they're not any better but you know it's just one of those things I think it's not as bad as perhaps it could be it's just perhaps we've been spoiled in recent years having crystal clear parts and everything else but you know just one of those things but anyway guarantee you somebody aftermarket will have a go at it okay next up we're gonna the charity auction which is going which is obviously the snap one um, I won't subject you to the video again about it, but certainly we've got some more great prizes. This one here is from um, Terry. Terry Wilkins on the site has kindly donated this absolutely fantastic, looking it in the camera. This is the Hawker Hunter. Now, I haven't looked at this either. I don't want to crack the spine, but as you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful book and everything else. So he's kindly donated this one. So this is the Hawker Hunter by uh, Tim McClelland. Um, the Complete History, and it looks an absolutely beautiful book. Um, Steve Malley, which is the guy who took us round, uh, he's a member but um, and a good friend of us, uh, but he's the guy who took us round uh, the museum at um, uh, Bovington and kindly donated two more kits. So we've got the Tamiya uh, P47 and we got the 262, okay, both the Tamiya kits. And also, which is big hats off to them, uh, Bovington Tank Museum as well have donated this kit, which is the Tamiya, this is the Nashorn, okay, self-propelled artillery kit. So special thanks to the museum for donating those. So as you say, more great prizes. And I have to say, I'm not joking, the stash 
because I've got it in two places. You all know my stash sometimes when I have the camera that way, it's behind me. Now I've got another stash over there. And in fact, I did have somebody come around this week who thought it was all mine, was like, wow. And I'm like, no, that's not mine. Um, but we'll, this stuff is now worth, I should think, with a couple more bits, which I know that are coming, are gonna easily surpass us now with the retail price of over 2,000 pounds for all of this lot. So it is well worth it. So if you are umming and ahhing, then, you know, obviously, you know, if you want to put a bid in, please do. We're up, still up to, still holding at the moment. It's a little bit there. We've got two weeks left. So we're still at about 1177 It's $2,000 is current bid at the moment for this little lot. But we have got, and I will say it now, we've got a brand new airbrush coming in, which I'm expecting to come in. One of our model uh, members has donated. Uh, it'll be in for next week's show. Um, it's caught up with the old customs at the moment. So we've got a brand new airbrush coming into this as well. And we've got a few more bits and pieces that I know of which are en route. Again, thank you for all the cash donations that are coming in as well, or the checks coming in that are made out to snap. That's no problem at all. What I'm going to do is next week's show, I'm gonna list everybody's names with their donations and everything else on there. So if you wanna make a donation, it doesn't matter if we're talking a pound, 10 pound, 50 pound, 100 pound, whatever every penny helps and everything else like that. So a big, big thank you to everybody who's donated so far. Remember, you've got a couple of weeks yet, um, not next week, but the week after, I'm gonna do a live show, which will be a lot of fun. Okay, I'm gonna do it live streaming over the internet, um, if I can get it to work. Um, so that's when the winner will be drawn live on air and everything else like that, or not drawn, but obviously the winning bid will be announced live on the show, which in our time frame. I'm going to be doing it around about midday um, or maybe late afternoon, I don't know, because obviously it's just the thing about obviously different time zones and things like that. I'm going to pick a time zone which is all best to everybody. So I might say something like 7 o'clock uh, GMT, British time, um, on the Friday, something else like that. And we'll just do a little half hour show for this one and the proper news show will be obviously uh, up a little bit later but certainly loads of great prizes the list of kits now and the quality of the kits this isn't just the crap this is tamiya kits and we've got hobby boss down there and all the great kit manufacturers and hasagao and everything else so it's well worth trying to get your name down for this if you want an instant stash with everything else that's the way to do it okay first review up we're going to look at what we're going to look at first i'll tell you what we'll do the tank first so we're going to do this is the uh, take on kit this is the two-in-one uh, leopard kit so in this particular one you get the uh, mark one a5 and the c2 version obviously the german and the canadian version so let's have a look Okay, kit review time. Today we've got the Tacom, or Tacom. Uh, we've got the Leopard. This is the uh, Leopard 1 A5 C2 version. It's what we call the two in one kits. We've seen these before and we were very impressed with them. As you can see, very nice box art, a little bit different. Normally, obviously, you get a picture, something else like that, but we've got profile shots here, okay? Lots of technical details about it. Talking about the kit itself, as you can imagine, and all the rest of it. And then when you're waking your way around, as you can see, we've got a uh, Yugoslavian sniper figure. to come with it. And some just some little details around on the box. Looking at the sprue shots, which is quite a nice touch there as well. And up on the end there. So basically, in the box, we get... And everything okay as you can see quite well stuffed box uh, various parts down in here this is obviously our little figure we were talking about earlier okay and everything else so what we're going to do is just have a quick that way just a minute just to get down to the nitty gritty down the bottom here so as you can see we've got one piece seal bag which is quite a nice touch like that keeping it all nice and flat and safe Okay, so in the bag we've actually got, we'll keep this quite separate, we've got, we'll look at them straight away just here, we've got the headlights which seem to be very nicely done, very nicely clear, they've got a nice sort of um, convex look to them so it's actually working very well, okay I'll pop them back in the bag whilst we're doing it, okay and then we've got the actual booklet itself. So as you can imagine, it's basically talking about the actual uh, the leopard itself and its development phase and everything through that. Okay. Uh, usual gump as we go through. So basically what we've got down here, we've got the parts call out as you can go right the way through and then we're going in with it. So as you can just imagine, it's the usual thing, working our way through the lower hull, the wheels going in, which is what we sort of expect. 
Okay, and then obviously we're just going to be making our way through more wheels going on the lower hull. So we've actually got the actual track unit itself go parts going on there for attachment on the rear, the other parts. Working onto the upper hull, uh, this I believe is photo etch, uh, so we'll have to have a look at that in a moment. Okay, and then obviously the forward hatch working with the upper hull, adding all the little details down onto that one. A couple of call outs which are in Tamiya as we're making our way through. Okay, again, more of the little parts going on, got the lights going on, things like that, the stowage equipment, various uh, operational items down here, the side skirts going on down there and everything else. Okay, and then we've got this guy, which has got the color call out for the painting of it, which is a little bit uh, nicely done because you've actually got obviously the parts themselves and what we're calling out, so we're calling out gum metal, the dark yellow, the chrome silver, olive drab, various ones as we're making our our way right the way through this it's quite a nice touch okay and then obviously usual thing going on putting the tracks all on there so no doubt there's going to be a lot of that going on which is uh, one of those things of having fun with okay and then obviously we're going down with all the parts for the hull as some of the turrets stowage upper turret again so obviously we're talking about the various parts all going down in here photo etch parts being bent to put in the guns system and everything else going on the hatches open or closed okay and then obviously we're going along with that top one with that turret on there again with this sort of um i don't know what type of armor that is thin <laughs> uh, which actually bolts onto the side of it and then obviously you've got the color call outs for the figure and the turret going on okay then we're going on down in here so you've got your color call outs and everything else like that but as you may notice it then flips over and that is because that version is for the Leopard 1 A5 or you can build it as the Leopard C2 okay now obviously the Leopard C2 is the Canadian version versus the German version so obviously in here you've got exactly the same kit as it goes through obviously as we what we've just seen but with the differences mainly on the upper turret I do believe between this and the actual uh, the German one we've just seen so you can do the Canadian one hence whilst you get then the diagram so that's why it is a two-in-one kit because obviously you can do the C2 or the normal A5 version of the Leopard again it's quite a nice little touch so usual thing when you're doing with armor we've got our poly caps all down here as you can see usual thing nothing exciting we've got some steel braided or copper is it steel copper uh cable okay that's for it the trouble with those is is actually bending them and getting them to go round and everything else like that I tend to like put a weight on them to straighten them out and then start to bend them the photo etch set which i won't get out but as you can see it's a beautiful little set so we've got your nice uh, grills and the extras we were talking about the parts that needed bending um the actual uh periscope uh, covers things like that on there as you make your way through so that's a nice touch Two sets of decals, as we know. So down here, obviously, we've got the one for uh, the actual uh, the German forces, and then obviously we've got the K4 ones as well, which is a nice touch, and obviously for the Canadian as well. So there we go. Right. Okay. Let's have a look at the little figure. I'm not going to have to worry about getting him out because he is pretty minute and all the rest of it. But you see, it's nice level of detail. You got him. Two sniper rifles okay and then obviously he will be posable exactly where you want him so you can either have him holding the rifle itself or without hence you get two guns okay and the actual figure himself get the glare off doesn't look too bad i think it'll go quite well and his face yeah i think he he looks at the top no problem with that okay so beautifully bagged up so it's all in little separate bags and everything else and to give you an idea of the scale so we've got the top and lower parts so if we start on the lower hull no problems at all okay looking quite nice details with these as you can see just right off the bat no problem with any of that at all so we said some of these are already molded in so you can either see of it will save you a bit of time doing it or you know add those on um there is a little bit of weld detail but nothing you would go wow about there is a couple of little weld seams around here okay and we've got the upper part for the turret as well so as you can see quite nicely done crisply molded no sign of anything obviously once it's got all that stowage on and everything else like it okay i'm working our way through so not too bad with that at all okay in bag one which is the green sprue okay so what we've got down here we've got the upper turret okay seems to be very nicely done can't see any problems with that it has got that nice 
texture to it of being uh, cast and during the manufacturing process transferred very well onto the plastic so as you say you've got this detail some of it's already on here sometimes you have to add these afterwards but as I said you have got little weld marks running right the way around the turret as well so as you said when you glue this bit to this bit don't worry about it too much because you will have a nice big weld on there anyway so as I said we've got some nice texture you can see down on here for the actual the gun itself the cover over the top that's very nicely done looking at all the sprue generally got no problem with that at all no sign of flash uh, we've got no nasty ejector pins you know obviously they're all present but they're quite shallow okay but generally looking around as you can see on some of these parts they do look very nicely done I can't see any problem with that the barrel got some nice details down here on the barrel and working our way right the way over as you can see so I can't see any problem with that at all some nice details especially around this hatching it's very crisp very precise okay somewhat of an order. Okay, so next up, this is what the one I was interested in about some of this detailing on the side. So as you can see, you've got your, you know, your normal sort of call out for your sprue and everything else like that, working all your way around it. But the only thing I don't know is that, the best way to show you, this detail in here, if we catch it in the light, you can see it's very quite nicely quite sharp there in the light it looks pretty good okay and on this one as well but these forward ones they just look a little bit soft now I'm no armor expert as we all know okay but I don't understand why this is very nicely sharp and this is soft the only thing I can imagine is the way the mold is laid out okay and it goes through but it does seem to be always on this downward part so for instance when we're looking at these two guys here Again, catching it in the light. Seems to be nice detail, seems soft here. It could be that's how it is on the real thing because I can't understand why these have got it and not else ones. Or it could be that it's that complex for doing it. It's not got it, okay? It hasn't worked out as well as what they were thinking. But as you can see, this is this extra armor areas down in here. It doesn't look too bad at all. It does look pretty good. No problems with that at all okay so usual thing we've got the mg on the top here and the various items for it. it seems to be quite nicely done okay some of the little items so we've got the aerials and the various things like that going on up here again doesn't look too bad at all i'm working our way through let me just change the around to more of a clean side so you can see these details a little bit clearer without having all the rubbish behind okay see they tend to be quite nicely done a little bit of flash uh but they're on the actual uh ejector pin releases anyway so I won't worry too much about that generally it seems to be quite good I've got no sign of burring or anything else like that looking at the details like even down in here they look quite nice I've got no problem with it any of this at all looks pretty good okay so now the green one well we're not going to get that one out of the bag I don't think because it's just tons of everything these are the caps I do believe for the uh, the actual um, tracks themselves so as you can see many many of them down in here but you've got the actual end uh, drives looking quite nice nice detail no problem with those at all very sharp very crisp okay. being all in greenness it's probably covered with my camera on the cutting mat okay so we've got a match pair of sprues here as you can imagine just like this but having a look around them as you can see we've got the actual shafts running across they all look pretty nice okay some of the smaller details seem to be of cast very nice as well so I'm working our way around all of this no problem with this at all seems to be all very good can't see any problems with any of the mold everything else okay you know if you want to get picky it's a little bit softly molded in there could be a little bit sharper when you're dealing with bolts and things like that so all of these wheel ones they look a little bit soft but generally we're all okay okay and we're just working our way around everywhere again nothing you would go massively overboard because it is what it is it's actually very nicely done So down in here, again, pretty nice, no problem at all. So we've got some nice details down on here with all the various uh, latches and handles and things like that. They all seem to be very nicely done. Let's say casting on this is pretty good all the way around. 
Uh, looking at some of these smaller parts, no sign of flash, everything else. Obviously the more Canadian, modern uh, machine gun there. Again, working our way through. And as you can see, all the ejector pins are nicely flattened down. Pretty nice, all of that. Can't see a problem with any of those. Okay. And we can have a look at the side skirts and see how they look. And obviously what I've been waiting to see, to see if they are the same as the other ones. Okay. So, as you can see, these are the side skirts, and these are moulded a lot nicer, but they're still not as clean as perhaps you would have hoped for. They're okay, but I don't know, it's just the detail is either there or it's non-existent. It looks like it's such a fine area, perhaps it was pulled from the mould a little bit quick, something else like that. But generally, it does seem to be all nice, there's no problems with it at all, it's just the way it is. I'm sure it, by the time it's had a wash, some filtering, things like that on there, it will be absolutely fine. So as I said, we've got these front arches as well, quite nice detail, but again, it's just, I don't know, the, the riveting, or bolt, I should say, detail on these top ones, it's just a little bit soft, it's not as sharp as perhaps you would want. I've got a tiny little bit of flash on this sprue, just on some of this stowage equipment, on these shovels, things like that, the axes and things. They've got a little bit of uh, flash on them, okay? And the equipment, just a little bit, not as sharp as perhaps we've seen in recent builds and kits and things like that. But generally, it is armour. You get away with so much more of it. And obviously this. So, in here, we have got, these are rubber. I'm not gonna get all these out. So basically we've got the rubber, um, you know, obviously for the tracks, the connectors, and obviously the track itself on the little rubber feet. So as you can see, this is one of those ones where you spend an evening making tracks and everything else like that. Okay, it's not the sharpest bit of armor we've seen recently, but definitely it is very clean, very nice. And obviously if you're in the, you know, you want to do a leopard, perhaps you just want one for the stash, at least this way you can do the Canadian version or the German version, you know, no problem at all, but definitely highly recommended for your leopard stash. Okay, nice looking kit, that one. As I say, you know, it's nice to get the two in one, so it gives you the options anyway to do that one. So if you want a nice one for your stash, that's definitely one to go with. Okay, next up we've got, this is the ICM, this is the, uh, the DO215B4. Okay, next up we've got the ICM. This is uh, the DO215B-4 uh, bomber. Okay, ICM, I must admit, I was always a big fan of ICM. I love their stuff, a certain way of uh, doing things. Okay, so basically this is the reconnaissance version uh, of Adornia. So what we've got down here, lovely box art with everything else on there. Okay, and obviously the biggest difference is this little bit down here with your reconnaissance camera. A little bit about the uh, actual bomber itself down on there and uh, about the company. Usual things around the box. So we've got a couple of color call outs. Well, I think you've got the one color call out in this one. But what you do get, which is quite a nice touch, is you've got some nice good old fashioned CAD work here on the back as well with the actual bomber. So you can see exactly what type of details you're gonna get right off the bat. Something of a different box. And I know it seems really sad and how anarchy must you be to be sort of, you know, comparing boxes. But this one actually has got an open top box which you know I think you know it makes it a little bit stronger being this type of box which from a point of view of things getting crushed I think it's a little bit of a help but also it's one of those things you don't have the pull off top you don't have double lids and that but at least it has got a halfway decent box down in here so as you can see one giant brag of sprues which as you know I'm never a fan of because they end up knocking each other out and we've got the instructions so if we just lose that a moment and we'll have a quick look at the instructions first. So, um, pretty thin paper, cracky, that is thin. <laughs> uh, the usual thing, so we've got it in, uh, obviously, uh, Ukraine and uh, English for the actual things down here. We've got a sheet decal, which looks crude. This is the thing with ICM stuff, okay, and this isn't any disrespect to them because they're not one of the giant companies, shall we say, out there. They do produce a very good quality of kit, but they're almost a limited run. They're not a limited run. They are a proper established company, don't get me wrong. It's just that they tend to um, have a, a budget, obviously, uh, and they're coming in on budget. And this does mean that certainly things like the booklet, you know, you don't get a staple through it and all the rest of it. You do tend to get one bag with it all chucked in and everything else like that. And the decals do tend to be a little bit iffy, shall we say. But generally, as you'll notice in a moment, or I hope you're gonna notice, this is where it's gonna be rubbish or something, but usually you do get a very nice kit. 
in amongst it all. But basically, here we go, we've got all the usual uh, things down here. The parts you're not going to use, obviously, this is the reconnaissance version. So basically, down here, it's calling out for not using these. Uh, and obviously, these are the parts for the bomber. Um, so we've got CAD work type instructions down in here as we go through. So as you can see, usual thing, working with the cockpit, putting all the details in amongst there. You've got your color call outs as well with these, uh, obviously numerically calling like H and things like that. All right, but as you can see, the various parts going down in here, various things because obviously for the camera unit which is this little guy down here so you have got the option not to have the bulged uh, camera bay uh, with or without all right so if you're putting that down we've got some nice structural framework going in there some nice wicker type seats okay fuel tanks going down in there as you can imagine putting those in uh, cooler scoops things like that wings pretty straightforward it's just going to be sandwiched down on top of each other and then putting them in nice detail with the engine these though so you've got those nice engines down there uh, going in uh, into the nacelles as they're going to be flitted onto it okay and then you've got the mounts for the gear and everything else as it's going to come through and the gear going on as you can see it's quite busy but it's separate parts so instead of one of them where it would just do it and with arrows pointing in at least they are individually uh, named because it is quite complex down into this area okay so that's those on fitting them in and as i said you can do i presume the bomber version it's actually calling not to do the bomber version in the park callouts but it's got them in here okay so reconnaissance slash bomber, I think that's what we're saying here. Okay, and then putting those in. So you've got the bulge uh, for the actual uh, down here and you can fit the gun in as well into this one. You've got those twin uh, machine guns to the rear. Okay, which is obviously quite a, a common sight with the Dornias uh, going through. And we've got your color call out. I know that's not actually some type of camo, that's just poor printing. Okay, so it goes in, but as you can see, you can go right the way through and then putting them in as it goes all the way through different types of markings obviously decal placements uh, are various things about them from obviously this one is based in Finland in 1941 uh, that's France 1940 uh, depending on which obviously versions you want to do or you've got that nice speckled under camo down here uh, so that's Ukraine in 41 uh, and then obviously Ukraine again in 42 with if you wanted something a little bit different under there so there we go, that's the instructions. Let's have a look at the part. Now, this is where someone needs to be paying slight attention. Okay, so actually what we've got down here, we have the clear parts, which luckily these are in resealed bags, which is good for me, because it means I don't make a total mess of them. Separate bagged, we'll have a look at these first. So. Right, okay, now I'm not sure why. Now, I've just, this is where, you know, obviously normally I'd edit, but we do it in real time. See, it is saying down here, you can see, it's not using this one, which is a good job, because if you've seen it, I saw it, and it's just, you know, it's like shower glass. It's horrible. Okay, so all right, forget that. <clears throat> it's just that why is it even there if it's so bad? But generally, looking at this one here, what you've actually got, which is very nice, this is raised um, framework all around here, which makes masking really easy. If you're using a masking set for it, at least there you can fit them in easy. But if you're using traditional message uh, methods of perhaps putting Tamiya tape right the way over and then cutting it, it's really easy because it's nicely raised and everything else like that. So that's quite a nice touch all down in there. Okay, it's very clear, very crisp, no problem. There's no distortion or anything. Just don't take any notice of that one. Okay, then you've got the actual front glass itself. Again, it's nice, it's flat, it's crisp. No problems with that at all. That's very nicely done. Obviously, I don't know, does it use, does it even call out for the other one? No, it's not calling out for uh, that one at all because that one's not even in the bag. Okay, so don't have to worry about that but no no problem with the clear parts all very nice the only thing is this guy here has got great magnification on it I don't know if you can see that my finger but um, it's hugely <laughs> it works very very well as a magnifying glass look so yeah we're just looking at this guy that works I thought it was really fuzzy but it's not it's just it's maximum magnification on it okay so that's very nice indeed if I do that bag I'm just gonna keep those safe don't want to wreck those. Put 
Oh, keep them safe. Okay, giant bag of goodies. So, let me just stick everything to everything. Let's have a look at as we work our way through. So, we're going to look at the wings to start with. As you can see, no problem with that at all. Great detail, very crisp, very nice. And then, as I say, when you look a little bit closer, you can see some of this detail down on here. So, again, pretty good. I'm catching some of the lights. There we go. You can see very nice recessed panel lining all over this. All right, it's deep and it's big because that's probably about the width of your thumb, this one running along here. Um, it's not, you know, as crisp, but that's what I'm saying. They're not, you know, sort of mainstream, but it is a nice crisp mold right the way through, as you can see. So yeah, some of the details, it is very, very heavy. Okay, um, it's not gonna win any awards, so let's put it like that, but there's no problem with it. It's not like it's got a fault, and that's the thing, okay? It's okay, it's not correct, it's not to scale. Um, it's huge, deep, trenching panel lines, but they're clean, they're crisp, precise, so I don't have a problem with it, okay? I'll let the river counters have a go at about, obviously, the size of panel lining and all the rest of it. From my point of view, looking at it, I can see immediately, like with these here, these are huge, very big, big, you know, deep lines. But at the same time, you've got this stuff. Catch it in the light, okay? It's very nice. It's extremely detailed ribbing texture in some of this stuff. So, okay, if we work our way around, as you can see, this stuff here is a lot finer, this detail on the actual fuselage, this panel lining. Yes, it has got some, it looks like it's been kicked around a mold a little bit. And we got, it's not a sink mark, but it's something uh, down in here. So a little bit of a, a cough on there. You've got obviously where it's injected in, you get these lines here. Now that, you can't feel it, it's just, it looks like it's something there. But generally all pretty nice as i say it's a shame this isn't the same on that if i show you both together you can hopefully see you've got very nice recessed panel line in detail which you, you can't even get your nail in it's that thin and then you've got this stuff over here you can lose your nail in okay it's quite a lot of difference going on anyway let's have a look around so down here we've got some of this nice fuselage detail for the framework very nice no sign of flash anything around it some nice holes into it as well okay making our way over down here we've got some of the equipment it's generic okay but you could always liven it up with a little bit of lead wire and everything else make your way around it uh, we've got the tails again no problem with that at all very nicely done clean and crisp and on these guys down here, again, we've got some nice details showing through. So you've actually just got a little bit of ribbing texture coming in and with the control surfaces as well. Okay, we've got the ailerons here. Again, it's got some nice ribbing detail in there. So again, no problem. You've got no ejector pin marks on the back side of it either. And all the ejector pin marks, whilst, you know, obviously it's been pushed out of mold, they're quite softly done. These guys down in here wouldn't take much. A couple of swipes of the sanding stick to get rid of. It's a kit of two halves, you know, it's not Tamiya. We, recently we've done a lot of um, reviews of the big companies uh, which are pushing out incredible pieces of engineering uh, with very fine panel line detailing. This isn't that type of company, okay? This is your more sort of, you know, your smaller company who's making their way through it. So you have to forgive them certain things, okay? What I think is lovely though, is no flash on this mold whatsoever. It's an extremely clean, uh, very well presented uh, frame here okay so looking at these engine mounts again very nicely done they've got no flash no nothing at all these bomb racks very nicely cast considering they're at an angle I presume these are fuel tank toppers okay nice riveting detail on these and then obviously the handle okay we don't have but you're not going to expect it um, on a kit like this obviously we've got the exhaust stacks and not hollowed out but we have got some nice details perhaps on this engine you can see Again, some nice little details down there. The spinner themselves, interesting way they put it on the frame. But again, we've got a bulkhead here with riveting detail. The machine gun magazines, we've got those just down there. Quite nicely done, again. And the actual engine, so we've got some engine. Uh, we've got the wiring already put onto those for the injectors and everything else like that. The supercharger down here at the bank. Undercarriage, the bombs. The guns themselves, to be honest, are a little bit crude, but you know, obviously we are dealing sort of 148 scale here you know you're not going to make masses out of it so down here we got a, that's a joint sprue okay so we've got here this is tends to be some more internal details various bits and pieces again we've got no sign of flash on this sprue whatsoever which is a nice touch uh, very nice clean crisp mold so we've got the fuel tanks just down here and making our way around this is our camera pod 
Okay, we've got a seat, we'll look at it, flip it over in a moment. Again, some nice details, no flash, no nothing. Got the control yoke down here and everything else as you're making your way through. Inside detail, you have got some eject pin marks there. I don't know if you'd worry about them too much. A couple of swipes with a sanding stick or perhaps a little bit of filler. They do tend to be slightly off center, the way it's been pushed uh, in and everything else like that. As we've got it here, we've got the actual tail wheel system. As you can see, it is completely molded in one part. Okay, but you have got at the same time some very nice sort of lattice work here for the seating. Okay, and everything else as you work your way around. Nice job on that wheel, it's perfectly symmetrical, no problem. But considering it is just one lump, that's not too bad at all. Working our way around. And as you can see, we're back down to very fine recessed panel lining uh, on the actual engine systems themselves, on these nacelles as they make their way through. Uh, going around, looking at these other bits and pieces. As you can see, we've got some nice detail. We've got no, we've got tiny little bits of flash each side, but that's just being really picky now and working our way around. And these other guys down here, as you can see, it's all really there. And that's it. So we'll have a quick look at the decals. But as I said, it's very hard to see these. A bit like they're home printed. They're not normally as sharp, but these actually aren't too bad. These guys here, admittedly, are very hard to read what they're saying. It's a little bit blurred. The you know the actual ones for the um, the actual controls, just generic junk ones if we're honest. Okay, and all the way through, their decals are always a little bit of a weak spot. So, what can you say? Uh, this is what I'm saying. It's, it's one of those companies, ICM are not one of the big manufacturers. They're a small U a Ukraine manufacturer that knocks out some actually very well researched, nicely detailed kits. The trouble is, and I do have to say it, the panel lining on the wing, as you look at it like this, is absolutely huge, okay? Then you look at it on other areas, like on the actual uh, the fuselage, as you can see, is tiny. So the trouble is, when you're gonna put this thing together, you're gonna have a situation, you're gonna put a wash on and have great big wash panel lines on the wings and hardly anything on the actual uh, fuselage or on the actual the engine nacelles themselves when they're attached to the wing. Again, they're very fine, very finessed. So what you're gonna do, you know, you could bite the bullet and then obviously rescribe it, fill this lot, rescribe it, go again. Or you just rescribe the fuselage ones, make them a little bit deeper, so it's time to marry up. But I think you are gonna notice quite considerably the difference between what's on here and what's on the fuselage itself. So it's gonna be a little bit of a headache. But that's where you sort of you know, you have to draw the line. It is a shame. You think somebody would have thought, that's a little bit deep. We might want to do something similar on the fuselage, or if we can do it on the fuselage, why can't we actually do it here? But as I said, again, you've got it on, these are the tail ones uh, for the tail planes. They're really deep and these aren't, okay? So it is that little bit thing, because uh, from a scale point of view, they are the width of your thumb all the way over it. So it's not really nice. But as I said, if you can live with all of that, it's a very nicely detailed kit. There's plenty to do in there. There's plenty of details that are really gonna to come to life. And as I said, a little bit of scratch building, a little bit of lead wire, you can really turn that into a fantastic kit. So there we go. That is the ICM uh, DO215B4. Okay, so there you go. You've seen that one. Uh, I don't know, as you say, it's a, it's a bit annoying that the fuselage is different to the wings with that recessed panel lining. Is it being nitpicky? I don't know. It's one of those sort of borderline where I could actually slate a kit for being like that. But it's ICM, and as I said, you know, the quality is very good. It's just unfortunate it has got that small fault. So I don't know if you're, I don't know of many modelers who would fill the entire wing section and rescribe it. That's the trouble. Um, you could do, obviously, or you could just slightly widen up the stuff on the fuselage so it sort of is a little bit closer. You know, I know certain. The old school way of doing it when you used to use things like blank washes, big panel lines, stuff like that, um, from sort of you know 10, 15 years ago, it would have been a modeler's dream, okay? But nowadays everyone's a little bit more subtle with the weathering and things like that, so I think perhaps it's just a little bit heavy. But needless to say though, it's still a lovely kit, nice solid detail in that. The clear parts are absolutely beautiful and everything else like that, so well done for ICM. Okay, so we've got um, in the forum, obviously loads going on at the moment, and next week's show I'm gonna cover obviously a little bit from the forum, but basically we've got the buddy build going on. There's loads of buddy builds happening at the moment. 
Uh, the main one is obviously the airfix typhoon the 124th one um, you don't have to do sprue shots and all the usual things don't forget this is a buddy build it's not a sig or a group build it's basically just a group of you guys coming together and i don't know how many are doing at the moment if i have a look over on my screen i don't know how many of you are in there where are we all the way down the bottom right uh where are we dee, dee, dee. I can find it, buddy builds, uh, Hawker Typhoon. There's six builds of those going on at the moment. Okay, just to list them off, we've got an F-15 buddy build going on there. We've got the tracked buddy build, which is the firefighting one still going on. The F-111 buddy build going on in there. Uh, the 132nd Hawk, um, uh, buddy build is going on in there and we've got an F4 Phantom buddy build which is 15 of those going on at the moment. The buddy build system, the way it works, as I said, there's no prizes, there's nothing at all, okay, it's not like a proper group build or a SIG. It's basically when there's enough of you come together, I can give you a dedicated area in the actual forum. So we have the buddy builds area down there in the forum. And what you can actually do then is basically shoot me a PM and say, look, I've got four or five guys of us, we want to do it, okay, and then we'll give you your own section in there. So that way you can do all your reference material and everything else, but you don't have to treat it like a full SIG if you don't want to. So I know some guys obviously haven't got the time to do full SIGs and group builds, but perhaps you want to build along. So obviously the guys doing the Hawker Typhoon at the moment, 124th one, it's a nice one because you've got some great guys in there who've really pushed on with the build, so other guys can follow along in their footsteps, um, you know, and see where the pitfalls are and what's working and what's not and you can carry on but as you said you don't have to treat it like a massive full-on group build or the SIG where we're, you're expected to put down obviously photos before you started work during the actual build sharing your knowledge and everything else it's just literally more of a friendly way of actually getting on and doing it. So anyway, we've got the Overlord um, one going on at the moment. So that is gonna go through till the 23rd of November. So uh, where are we? That is, obviously it's a full group build. So obviously there's prizes and the various things at the end of this one. And at the moment we've got 92 entries on with that one. So that's going very, very well at the moment. And we've got 11 completed. So we'll be looking at those next week. We've got there the post-apocalyptic uh, vehicle mayhem. See, I'm getting good at saying that one now. Got till the 26th of October running on that. And we're getting some good ones coming through with that one as you say and even I'm gonna have a go at that um, so we've got 12 builds going on with that one at the moment we've got the Tiger Sig this is the um, Tiger Tank Sig going on there at the moment 26 entries in there five completed you've got the 14th of September and uh, what else have we got the Great War we got the hundredth um, uh, centenary celebration of it or you know say celebration uh, but SIG going on at the moment so anyway we got the 16th of November with that one speaking of which um, it's turned up this morning I have got the Tamiya uh, I think it's the Mark V tank uh, the motorized version has just come in from Japan I ordered that one direct because um, they're horrendous price over here um, but managed to get that quite cheap out of Japan that has turned up and also I just have to say uh, Hobby, um, Hobby Link Japan ordered it and it turned up four days later and to me that's good service especially when you're literally more than halfway around the world uh, and everything else like that um so yeah that's it loads of those going on at the moment so please feel free to enter and everything else so remember group builds get the prizes and everything else like that and obviously the medals sigs don't uh, but i will do a video montage at the end with all your great work uh the buddy builds don't get much at all although i will pop through next week and we'll have a look at all your great work and everything else like that so that's about it for this week. As I said, next week I'm going to be in the airbrushing thing. Keep an eye on the actual uh, main site page, Facebook and all the rest of it. And I'll keep you updated as we make our way through and everything else like that. Also, I know I've got loads of questions. A lot of you have asked me massive questions and I said I'll explain them in the new show. Um, time factor, really. Uh, but next week I will get through and I'll answer as many questions as I can for you as well. So until next week, everybody, happy modelling and take care.